there is plenty of history between the Miami Dolphins and the University of Alabama. The saga between the two programs really kicked off back in 2006 when then-Dolphins head coach Nick Saban fled Miami to head back to the collegiate ranks. This came after weeks of speculation and even a quote straight from Saban himself saying, I'm not going to be the head coach at Alabama. Fourteen days later, Saban was at a press conference in Tuscaloosa being introduced as the head coach of Alabama. The success that Saban enjoyed after leaving the Dolphins is legendary, as he has built one of the most storied programs in college football history. It is difficult for Dolphins fans to watch the overwhelming success of someone who spurned you in order to leave for greener pastures, and rooting for Nick Saban is almost sacrilegious in Miami. As the Miami Dolphins gear up for the 2022 NFL Draft, we take a look at possible Alabama prospects that the team can select. But we Dolphins fans have begun to soften on our Alabama stance, as Crimson Tide players are now spattered about Miami roster. After many years of passing on Alabama players, we've seen guys like Kenyon Drake and Minka Fitzpatrick come and go, and current quarterback Tua Tungavailoa as a Saban disciple. Raekwon Davis and Jalen Waddell are also former Alabama guys and promise to be a big part of Miami future. Saban is sending yet another solid crop of prospects into the league this season from a team that was once again a national championship finalist. So can the Dolphins add to their list of Crimson Tide players that they have drafted? And, should they? Here are three Alabama prospects that Miami can select within the first three rounds of the 2022 NFL Draft. Jamison Williams. There is much speculation about what Miami will do with their first-round selection, as it has been the subject of trade rumors as well. But if Jamison Williams drops to the late first-round window, then look for the Dolphins to swoop him up. Williams won't be the first wide receiver to come off of the board. Chris Olave, Traylon Burks, and Drake London figure to be some of the first pass catcher selected, meaning that there is a possibility that Williams isn't even taken until the second round. He shouldn't fall past the Dolphins, though. Williams is a speedster who was once a track and field runner and originally started his collegiate career with Ohio State. He was relatively unknown until he made the transfer to Alabama. In his two seasons at Ohio State, Williams amassed a total of 268 yards and three touchdowns. In one year with the Crimson Tide, he put up 1,572 yards and 15 scores. Williams would make a solid complement to play opposite of Jalen Waddell, and next to Cedric Wilson Jr. who can also take the top off of defenses. I personally don't think that Williams will be available when the Dolphins are on the clock with the 29th pick. But if he is, there shouldn't be a question about whether they select him. Christian Harris. There seems to be a consensus top three ranking when it comes to the 2022 linebacker class. Devin Lloyd out of Utah is generally the top-ranked prospect, followed by Nicobe Dean, whose draft projection is all over the board depending on who you ask. Christian Harris out of Alabama could be a guy that the Dolphins have their eye on, potentially in the second round. Harris is a stellar athlete whose body is NFL-ready. His best attribute is his pass coverage, as he is able to cover backs out of the backfield as well as match up with tight ends down the field, both skills that would come in very handy for a Miami defense who might be losing a piece or two this offseason. If the Dolphins covet Christian Harris enough, then he could be worth trading up for. It is unlikely that Miami goes with a linebacker with its first-round pick, and he might be gone by the time they select again at number 50. Don't be surprised to see the Dolphins use some of their draft capital to move up in the second round, whether it be for Harris or someone else. Fidarian Mathis. Much has been made about the defensive line prospects out of Georgia, and for good reason. But both Travin Walker and Jordan Davis will be gone by the time the Dolphins pick at number 29, and they probably wouldn't want to spend their first-round pick on a defensive lineman anyway. But there is a lesser-known lineman from Alabama, who is a big boy in his own right that is able to play laterally and be a versatile interior lineman. Fidarian Mathis comes from a long line of successful defensive tackles to come out of Alabama, and he will look to make his mark on the league by following the same path. He displays inconsistency at times, but he has great technique and his flaws are teachable and correctable. This would likely be a depth signing for the Dolphins depending on how the rest of the offseason plays out. The defensive line is one of the positions of the least concern for the franchise, and they may end up putting very few assets into it at all in 2022. But if the philosophy is to select the best player available, there may come a time when Fidarian Mathis is that man. The Miami Dolphins are riding with Tua Tungavailoa this year, and Chris Greer, and Mike McDaniel, but Tom Brady could be the future. We don't know what the future is like for Tom Brady in Miami but we do have a good idea that his future in Tampa Bay is coming to an end. He retired once and came back saying there was no need for him to sit out the year. 
presumably because he thought he would be with Miami. We all know by now that the Brian Flores lawsuit stopped a lot of plans for both Brady and Stephen Ross but what happens after the 2022 season? In Tampa, it is now being reported that anyone buying season tickets to their games will be required to buy two full seasons instead of one. This from Pro Football Talk and that is good indication that the Buccaneers see this as the final song in Brady's time with Tampa. So then what, are we to believe that Brady is going to walk into the proverbial sunset, hang up his cleats, and play, stay at home dad? I doubt it, by the end of this season, the Brian Flores, Stephen Ross issue should be over. Roger Goodell's punishment should be handed out and the case should be closed. That opens the door for Tom Brady. No one will care anymore that Ross wanted to meet with him illegally. The owners are not going to block the player that everyone believes is the best ever. Tom Brady is Tom Brady and he will either be playing somewhere else in 2023 or he will be managing or involved in ownership. He was close before Flores blew everything up. His desire to play for the Dolphins in 2019 and take on a minority ownership role that may have involved football operations decisions, can't be thrown out entirely. There is more than genuine interest and this could very well end up being a similar role to what John Elway had, has with the Broncos. We are a long way from 2023 but this time next year, we could be having a completely different discussion on what the Dolphins are doing and maybe, who might be involved.